favors of other coaches at Alabama. And uh, we're going to have a little surprise call in at our team meeting tonight and then again tomorrow night. We meet as a um, team at the hotel. We have a curfew. Everybody has to come into my room, make sure everybody's there. We have a little meeting and then everybody goes to their room. So tonight, tomorrow night, that'll happen. But there'll be a couple surprise phone calls from some people uh, from campus. So uh, that's part of it. I can't tell you the rest of it. <laughs> do, do you feel like your offense really broke through with that third game against uh, Southeastern? Yeah, and I really think, you know, the Saturday night, you know, the, the ninth inning, it, it was, uh, you know, we had the two run home run, but then we had like three or four hits after that. And I always say, what's more important than the home run is the next kid after the home run. Because if you give them a home run, maybe it's a solo or a two run, and then you get the next three out, the pitcher's like, heck, I can do this. But we continued to do it and scored, I think, three more runs and uh, kind of put them away. Same thing, uh, first inning. And, you know, th this was one of the first times all year we were down, they scored a run, biggest game of the year, right? But nobody had their head down. And we came right back out in the bottom of the first, executed two right in a row, drag bunt by Christian White, had a slap and run by Larissa Pruitt, and then the floodgates opened. And it was like one of the best innings, seriously, I've ever seen here. Uh, I think 10 hits in the inning, which is unheard of, uh, and just really set the tone for the whole day. Coach, how are you going to bring that momentum into parts? Well, hopefully it'll just continue, you know. We had two good practices this week. We concentrated on one pitcher yesterday and one pitcher today, and uh, we'll get to practice for like 90 minutes on their field tomorrow. Um, there's about half the team that have, has not played on that field. We played last year up there, so just to see how the ball travels and play the wall and you know foul territory is different than ours the backstop is way different as well so just to see all that are you going to be able to bring a mcdonald's biscuit to <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that i might have to have caroline send me one but um you know you have to be smart aggressive you can't be stupid aggressive and there's a big difference so same coaching base running the whole thing at this time of the year, you got to be smart, aggressive, and there's an opportunity to take it. If not, you pull the reins back. But you have to be, you got to be smart about it. When you look at this Tennessee lineup, I'm doing a little research. There, there's no weak point. They seem to be evenly spread out. There's not one strong point. How do you pitch a lineup that's that consistent and that deep? The other thing about them, they're all righties. I don't know if you notice that. It's almost the complete opposite of Southeastern Louisiana. They got a lot of pop. There's several kids with double-figure home runs. There's only one kid with double-figure stolen bases, and that's the leadoff, one of the best players in the country. But one through nine are all righties. Very few sacrifice hits. Some stolen bases besides Kiki, but not, not like Southeastern, who had 160. And then they bunted. You know, one kid for Southeastern had 25 bunts. Tennessee has 10 sacrifices on the year. Totally different look. So, number one, we gotta, we got to keep the ball in the ballpark. Um, make good pitches, hit our spots, and no freebies. You can't walk anybody. You know, when we beat them here one to nothing, Beaver pitched one of her best games of the year, but she didn't get any freebies. You know, the defense has to play really well behind her. And then, you know, the third key of postseason softball, we got to get a key hit. And, you know, we did that the last three games at home. When we were talking with Bailey, she was talking about, I think, just how well you know the players both by the motivational that Riley Valentine is the perfect person to send up there in the ninth inning. Yeah. You hear so much about analytics these days and things like that. Is it, is it a old school approach that really works really well for you? Well, you know, we have the analytics and Ryan I. Murray is our player development person. She's got all the stats about if he has better stats against righties or lefties, do they hit better against him? Does their hitters hit better against a lefty or a righty? Where do they hit the ball? There's a pie chart for everybody. This way, this way, this way, this way. You know, 20% of her hits go to the right center gap. 80% go to, you know, left center, whatever. So then you change your defense based on whatever you read on these. Um, and it's every game, basically. It's 56, 60 games or whatever. So there's a pretty good sample size, right? At the beginning of the year, I would never even look at that. Because, you know, you only play 10 games. That's not good enough. And if the pitching was no good, then you're really, you know, up a creek. So now we have about 55, 60 games where we can really look at it, set the defense, how many bunts do they have. You can, you can see, like, if you, have, if you have drag bunts on you or if you've done it, we can see how many you've been successful with. And then we tell the corners, hey, 
She could drag, she'll drag, she'll lay it down, and they come in five feet. If they've never bunted the entire year, they also know that. So, and then really, I think, you know, in Major League Baseball especially, the, the gut feeling, they don't even do it anymore. And it's sad, you know? Because uh, basically my pinch and hit decisions are gut. I really think she can do it. That's all and I say to myself. I think she's gonna do it right now. That's, and I pray that they get it done. <laughs> That's about it. You and Bruce Bochy, the last yes. two. Yeah, I guess. Cowboys out there. Coach, I got one last one for you. Heading into hostile territory, obviously a huge natural rivalry between both these two. What's that atmosphere gonna be like in playing in this conference for so many years, so many of these experienced ladies? How beneficial is that going into this environment? It's huge. You know, every, every weekend, you know, we play four away. Um, we had some good, we went to Georgia Tech at the beginning of the year and they sold out. You know, they're not cheering for us. So those, those type of environments, we go to UAB, you know, and they had 2,000 people there. But obviously this is bigger stakes. And I'd say it's going to be 90-10, 90% orange, 10% crimson. Uh, but when you go to Oklahoma City, and if Oklahoma's in the World Series, it's 10,000 cheering for them and 900 cheering for you. So might as well get used to it, right? Thanks so much.